Now is there sound? Is that better? Oh, I'm so sorry. No sound. Good evening, everybody. How are you? Let me go again. Hello, Sue, Donna, Yvonne, Leanne, Shirley. Welcome. We usually have sound, Shirley. There's usually really flash here, bells, whistles and everything. Um, Louise, Jen, Daisy, Pam, Pauline. You came up in conversation today. I think it was a good conversation. I'm pretty sure it was. Soon we're going to get surprised. Hello, Bobby. How are you? I haven't seen your name pop up for ages. Are you good? Nancy, good evening. Hello, Jeanette. Kathy, lovely to see that you are here. Um, Sylvia Trench is in the building too. Oh, thanks, Jen. Um, yes, fixed sound, all done. Sharon Keys is here as well. And Nancy's here. Good evening, Maria. I, poor Maria last weekend. We, it was a bit much, wasn't it? I, I, I was surprised you'd ever come back after the fuss Steve and I made about you. Um, Lois, hello. Oh, this is so nice everyone's watching. Doreen, looking forward to seeing you at the Gamby. Polly, welcome to Chandler's Cottage. If you've been here before, I'm sorry that I missed you. Have you all got sound now? You have, haven't you? Yes. I'm just behind. Oh, who can you hear me now? Are you sure? Give me a minute because you should have sound. Um, yes, 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 much better, lovely. Oh, phew. <laughs> it takes, there's a delay between me pushing the button and then it, yeah, uh, it's been a while since I've done that and that just shows you my state of mind. Oh, you've got your fabric today, Pauline. Oh, that's wonderful. You should all have it. Sound is good, sound is good. Looking forward to seeing you in Shepherd and Jenny. Wait a minute. I did I miss a memo? Jenny Miller, you are coming to Shepherd and Really? Now it's gonna be a party weekend. <laughs> right. Uh, Denise has got her fabrics too. Bernadette's in the building. Alright, so oh Carol, thank you. Great, everyone's here. Good. Hey. This evening's just it's kind of a little bit of a show and tell. Um, for my Quarters Life members, I would like to personally apologise for my very rough and ready state. I get on, on the videos I sent you on the weekend. Oh, we've got a few new people here this evening. May I? May I? Just indulge me for a minute, please. This is a Quarters Life, so this is our $10 a month club. And I think some of the people that are in the club um, very well may want me to pay them for watching because you know I'm at the new place and it's all euphoric and I'm in my check shirt and my hat and I just it's all wonderful so I think I'm wonderful and then when I actually saw the video back today that I had posted or two of them on a quilter's life I was like oh that's not that's not pretty that that was really rough and ready so no more close-ups of Lisa with no makeup and no sleep okay that's that's got to be off the. That's got to be off the table. That was just terrible. But I was really happy. Um, and those for those that are not in a quilter's life, uh, we are going back down this weekend. Um, every weekend is a challenge weekend, and Robert and Phil have created miracles, and we can live stream from the new shop shed. Now there's actually nothing in the shop shed as we are currently calling it yet. But there's no reason we can't have a live show in there in the big cavernous open space and I'll just have to mic up because it will be really echoey because there's no fabric in there yet so I might do it in front of the door so you can see down the driveway so we're going to do that on the weekend I will let you know when um, and I do know that when we are there I will be showing and telling you just uh, my Christmas projects for the Nagambi soiree so I'll pop on and say hi so you can you can see the shed it's not a shed anymore really it's just a big room and it's so bright you know, I think if we leave the door open at night time you'd be able to see it from space station because we put a lot of LED lights in there every time Nick the Sparky said how many I went more and so it's very bright it's very very bright anyway so what I was just working on then is okay so this evening's a little bit of an advertorial 
because it's Advent time. So a lot of you have already jumped the gun, um, early, early notification to Quilters Life members and those that are not in the club but were at the soiree. And then I put the link cheekily on tonight's event. And you've all been in there ordering and it's quite scary how quickly they're going. But I'm also very grateful and thank you very much for entrusting me with your December. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a sneak peek tonight and just explain it a little bit more because I tried to put it all into words on the website but I know what it's like you sort of get past the first two lines and it just becomes blah blah you know that's what I do in my head la 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 so I'll explain how it works for you and also I have I launched it before I'd actually done made the giveaway um, which is sort of ran the wrong way but I will have it done this week so I'll, that's what I've just been working on so I'll go through that in a tick let me just pop it back up um, good evening. Who said good evening, Lisa? Yvonne Collinson. Hello. Oh, I've got, Yvonne, I've got your orders and a couple of others out there that I didn't, that haven't gone today. So if you grab anything else, I'll combo. They're all picked. I just ran out of time this afternoon to get them out the door. So I'm nearly up to date. Oh, bit wet, says Glenda. Is it up wet up your end? Dookie? I forget which one of you's. Where, Dookie? Yes, we've had rain through here, but only a little bit. Bronwyn, good evening to you. Hello, Valerie, good evening. Great. Uh, Christine Allen's here. Jill Cross is here. <laughs> Country natural. Mm, that's one way to describe it, Nance. I'm not quite sure that wasn't that great, was it? All right, I'll pop this one up here. Okay, so um, tonight's, it's a little bit of a show and tell, and it's just a little, I want to start us on a little bit of a, kind of like a winter Christmas planning journey there'll be there'll be big stuff in between and, and you know that we're in the middle of moving and, and I'm doing more stuff quilters life stuff at the moment and you know that so I you know there are big things afoot but sometimes it's a little bit hard to get them get a whole heap of new things done every week but as it turned out there was a couple of things I really wanted to do with you tonight so we'll do that um, Advent. So last year I decided in about October <laughs> that we should do our Advent and the Advent idea for me, I mean Advent's a very very old concept, but it was born on Christmas Day, so what's this, this is 23, 22, Christmas Day 2021 and I woke up no, that's not true. I was getting ready to go and visit Robert in hospital on Christmas Day. They were letting me in for two hours, COVID thing and everything. And I had to rat test to go in. And the night before, I had the love basket, the picnic pack to take in. I hadn't seen him for two weeks. And um, I did my COVID test, my pre-test, because I thought I'll sleep better knowing I haven't got COVID. And I had COVID. So I spent Christmas morning for three hours in the sunshine at Sandringham Hospital waiting for my test, chatting with my mate Viv from Purple Stitches. And fortunately, I had taken a notebook with me. I don't know why, but I had one. And we sat and we talked for ages because it was Christmas Eve in the UK. And we came up with all of these things that we would love to do for the following Christmas. And none of them actually happened. And then I decided in October we would. So we did one last year and we sold out the packs that we had done on the first day. And then we managed to scrape up another 30 and then that was it. So we have planned a little bit better this year. The elves are already working, as you can see. If you met Miss Ava at the soiree on the weekend, I hope you didn't harass her too much because she is the keeper of the Advent Secrets because um, Ava is actually doing some of the envelope packing for me as our mum and dad and us. So it's all happening already. So this is what our envelope looks envelope looks like this year. Right, I've got more of them over here. So we went very bright, traditional this year. I'll pull one up and show you close up. And we just love our envelopes. We don't really care about what's inside. We, <laughs> we just like the envelope. So um, and we love the fact that we can print them ourselves. They're all shiny and they're gorgeous. You've got a different one for each day. So what happens is you order your advent it is posted out to you on the 1st of November. You get 25 envelopes. It's $5 a day plus postage. 
So it's more than last year. I can't stress enough that we, we, okay, so we lost out last year ourselves. So we've had to put a little bit more into it. But having said that, I don't know now because I've put so much more into this year's. So I like to think, what did I write? It's um, same price or less than a lukewarm cappuccino. And that's what you get each day. But, and for a Quilters Life members, you get a little bit more. So I'm going to show you what's in 1st of December. It, it, there is a picture of it on the website as to, ooh. oh, I like the sound of this one. This one rattles, what's in it? Can't remember. Can I smell it? No. Oh, I know. All right. See, I planned these a while. I have no idea what that is. I'll have to go back and look at the list because there's 25 of them. I sort of, I know them all, but I don't know which one. I can't sort of just by doing that remember what it is. This one's a good one. This one's really, can I show you how thick it is? Can you see that? It's thick and it's heavy. That's the heaviest one. So <clears throat> when you hop on and have a look at it on the website, tonight's search word, Steve's AWOL for the next two weeks, is off on his big, his last final big uni camp from on the Murray from Cobram to Ichuka or the other way around, I can't remember. Tonight's search word is Advent. So if you pop the word Advent into the search window on our website on channelscottage.com, it will bring up the Advent calendar and just a few other bits that I've got on the set tonight as well. So you've got two options. You can purchase it outright, which most of you have done, which is lovely for us admin-wise. Thank you very, very much. You do one out purchase of 125 now, uh, or you can break it down and you do two. You do one now for 65, excuse me, and then Come September, we'll send you an invoice to pay the balance of $60 plus postage. So you can do it that way or you can switch it around and you can do the 138 or whatever it is, including postage for most of you. So you can pay up front and then you get the freebie. And the freebie is a bag and that's what I was working on when you got here. So this is what's going on. The front of the bag now okay so I didn't plan it out I should have had this done earlier but there's been a lot going on but you get a pre-printed panel with a Melba Waratah on it like that uh, this is on a beautiful um, this is gorgeous linen it's called Austin and I feel like it's a guy it's just it's beautiful natural linen so it's all pre-printed on there ready for you to go and then you will also get a full ball of Sue Spargo variegated pearl wonderfill thread. So you get the whole shebang of that to do all of your stitching with. And then you're also going to get a big chunk of Melba fans in the rust. And what we're doing is we're making it into a wine bag. So I'm calling it a Waratah wine bag. So this will make up your two little handles um, and also the lining and the backs, the back side of the, want of a better word, the back panel and the base of your bag. I'm actually going to work out the dimensions of it with you tonight. I thought you might like to see me just do it straight here. So that's what you're going to get. You're also going to get the weft to go on the back of your linen panel while you stitch it out. You'll get your embroidery needle with it. Of course, in the pack, I'll pop that in for you. And I'm not going to pad mine out because it's going to be kind of like a scrunch down wine bag for me. But if you wanted to put some pallen or some extra interfacing on the back, I'll leave that up to you. But the kit's valued because of the printed linen everything and the thread, the kit's valued at $30. So we will be selling them separate on the website as a standalone kit if you don't want to do the advent, but if you sign up for the advent and pay up front, very tally selly, isn't it? Um, then you get this sent out for free. And if you have done that, we will start mailing out your kit on the 1st of July. So you'll be able to get it made up well and truly um, before, before your advent arrives. This, uh, I've been timing myself. This for me is two hours while watching television. And I'm doing all of mine in stem stitch. Oh, sorry, duh, chain stitch. 
I have a pl I've had a play around with other stitches. I'll leave it up to you. But the one that I'll probably recommend is is chain, just single, and you can see the variegated thread is just gorgeous. Love it. So I've got all of those hurtling their way air freight from Wonderfill in the US at the moment. I've got some here, but we're getting more in. Um, these are all at our digital printers. Again, I've got some of them here. The rest are being done at the moment. And then we'll start cutting the kits and getting them ready to go out on the 1st of July. Oh my goodness, how scary. They'll be shipped from the new shop shed. So we should well and truly be done and in. Best laid plans. So, and I'm sure you'll all be fine with chain stitch. I'll pop a couple of extra little tips in for you as well, because um, if you if you were at the soiree too and you were playing with Margaret's wheat bag and the variegated thread, you'd know that you start with the darker colour of the thread for the lower parts on your wheat stems. Remember we did that? Or if you weren't there, have a look on the Needleworker Soiree Facebook page. But, um, you know, so you can play around with where you place your colours. With this one, there's the variation is amazing so it happens um, more frequently than what you get in a dmc stranded cotton okay so i i really did start um paying attention to where i started with light or dark and then by the time i'd done two leaves i didn't care anymore but one really fun thing is is that you can while you're working on these larger pieces or sections down the bottom if you've got a small piece of thread that's left over you can see what I've been doing. I've been leaving it threaded up and popping up the top and doing one of the loops on the top of the Waratah. And up here, I am, see I've gone really pale on this bit and I'm using darker colours down towards the bottom if I can. But so yeah, any leftover short lengths, uh, instead of just taking it out, I'm popping up the top and doing the little loops. So that's where I'm at. Now you can see it is a little bit bubbly. I've got to keep dislocating that thumb. So I'm not working with no, no judgment, okay? Um, we're not talking about the roses or what I did on the weekend. Um, you, what I'm finding is, is that it's much easier for me to work out of the hoop. You can see it's just a little bit bubbly, but I'm not, I'm really not too stressed about it. And I just thought while you were here, you know, for a bit of moral support, I would just run over it. Just take that needle out. Um, with my Africa mat because just to just to protect it it doesn't really need it but after all that work I really don't want to hello Robin how are you this evening Yolanda welcome yes Sylvia that is a fantastic idea good stuff to do after hip replacement absolutely I just, um, I mean, everyone that comes to the soirees or who works on Mark stuff just loves the fact they can just pull it out and it's all printed and you can just stick, sit and stitch. Oh yeah, that's all going to be fine. I'm going to do it now without it. Super duper. Okay. Right. So I think... What did I say? Two. Probably it's about two even. It's really probably only two or three evenings worth if you don't get too engrossed in the television. And then you can put it all together. So just just to show you, because you might have something else at home that's about this size, and you might be thinking, oh yeah, wine bag. That's a good idea to use things up. Maybe some panels or something that you've got that you want to use. Um, and I thought I would just work out while you were here. The dimensions of this uh, this bag because it is a wraparound base and sides like the ones that we have been doing recently like the look at me bag and like the free Melba download tote the uh, shopping tote on the website so let's let's have a we'll have a measure up Okay, yours will, look, <laughs> yours will look a lot neater than this. I've got bits of weft sticking out the sides and I haven't chopped off the bottom on this one. Okay, so this is nine at the moment, nine inches wide. So, uh, no, you probably really want that up there, nine inches up there. 
okay and then we are 14 high so I want I want this to wrap around the base so given that I might want to trim it down a little bit from this and allow for a little bit of shrinkage I'm going to say that let's say eight and a half I'm going to trim down to eight and a half so we'll lose that which means the finish size with without seam allowance is going to be eight inches and if that's the case I really want a four inch base because remember when we add up our short and our long side in this case I'm going to square one when we add up our long and our short it has to equal the width of our bottom of our panel because we're going to bring this around each side now this was in the hand the hand design basics book which I'm redoing and we're going to do this and I, I pr promise people that we are going to do an online handbag design workshop you're just going to have to give me the grace. I need to do it from our new place. I'm going to start here and then move. It's going to be much nicer to do it when we actually are there. So we'll, I'm going to start filming that pretty much as soon as I get there. And get some decent light in my sewing room. It's, for, it's little like Fort Knox in the shop shed, but in my actual sewing room, we're going to get some extra lighting put in there. Or we'll play with it this weekend so that we've got some. But essentially, when you do a wraparound base and sides, the finish size the width of your panel has to be you add up the long side and the short side in this case I want a square base so both of mine are the same so we're going to do four and four so I need a base piece that is going to be four and a half inches square and my eight and a half is going to be this width so that means that with that um, with this I won't, I won't chop anything really off the height for now. I'm going to leave that. So that's going to stay... You're off camera, sorry. That's going to stay at 14. So I'm going to chop this through. Now keeping in mind we actually need three pieces. Yeah, because we need one for the back on the outside. And then we need two for the lining. We also need some straps, so I'm not going to leave you really short on straps. I want you to have decent thickness ones. So probably four thickness, we'll do the four thickness one. So four times, what do you reckon? One and a half, about there. So we'll go to six, that's sitting on the 14. I'm going to come down here. I'm just off screen, sorry. So this works really well for me. Can you see what I've just done? I've worked out that I need to put in your kit half a metre. So you've got that 14, I'll make it a generous, it'll be a bit over. Um, so you've got a bit to trim, but you need 14 for there, you need six for your handles. So you're probably gonna get, yes, that's right, 60 centimetres in your kit. So that's gonna be our handles. We can pop that aside and then this needs to be eight and a half. Oh, this is going to be good. You're going to have some left over. Woohoo! Okay. So we'll cut it eight and a half. And we need three. So I'm not going to chop into that. You're going to have heaps left. That's good. And you know, we could cut it down to its measly bit, but sometimes the cutting down takes more work in time than just giving you a nice big fat bit. Pop that over there. So that will be my three pieces. And then I think our handles on a, on a wine bag and a wine bag, we don't need to have really long handles. So I mean you can you can cut this if you like from your spare bit, but I think our two four and a half inch bases for inside and outside for me can come off the handle strip so okay that's them 
and then this bit here that's just going to give me two nice short handles to lug around my good bottle of Grange <laughs> sorry couldn't help myself but it won't be Grange so with our wraparound base and sides if you remember we find the middle we'll grab a pin Pop that in there. Just doing this to show you. So we've got a pin in the middle of the base, and then we'll pop a pin in the middle of one of our squares for the bottom there. Then they will go together like that. And then we'll sew out to the quarter inch seam point on each side. Okay, then our, woo, that one will go on the other side of that. But if I was making up the base at the, uh, sorry, the lining at the moment, I can do the same. Like that. So, you know, if you don't want to wait, you want to practice, you can make up your own. Just just play this back, grab the dimensions and uh, make up some at home while you wait for your freebie one with the stitchery to come in the mail. Okay. Whoop. All right. So now I've got those pinned together like that, and you'll actually sew across. Then, if you remember, what we do with this one is we sew across to those quarter-inch corners. And then you sew down each side, and then you'll be able to come back and you flatten out. Just put a pin in here to show you. I don't want to make mine up yet. It feels like I'm cheating because I haven't finished the stitchery. Okay, so when that's sewn together, then you'll be able to flatten out the hole in the bottom and sew across. Just like we're doing with the look at me and just like what you've got on your Melbourne tote on the website. All right, so that's what we're going to be doing. That's the method we're going to use. Now you know the dimensions. I will still write it all up in the pattern. I'm going to leave that pinned ready to go. And I'm going to finish off my embroidery. So uh, the only thing, so just remember with this, I'm going to pop weft in for you. It's linen. Um, a hoop is going to give you probably a much nicer tension than me that I'm going to get. I'm going to steam mine to get it nice and flat. Um, so a little six inch hoop would be a really good idea if you've got one handy, I'm sure most of you have got one, to pop it in. And um, I'm sure you'll have embroidery needles, but I'm going to pop one in with the ball of, ball of thread as well. So there you go. That's, that's what you're going to get. And then you've got something else nice to stitch. Just, you know, on, those lo on the long winter nights, that's... Um, Oh, Sylvia. Hello, Yolanda. What a lovely idea. Sharon finished her black background bottle brush. For those that you don't know what she's talking about, she is talking about this one on the Look At Me bag. Did you? Well done, Sharon. That's awesome. So you finished that while you were, while you were there. Hello, Kathy. Good evening to you. Uh, sure, Melissa, not a pro Yes, sure, absolutely. I know what you're saying. That's absolutely fine. Deb Wilkie's in WA. Well, there you go. Ruthie, hello. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Elizabeth, that's very lovely of you. Um, that's really nice of you. I'm, um, you know, we all, we're all good here. Oh, we're all good, aren't we? I think we're all good. I think we are. Okay, so that's that. Now, I promised you I'd give you... Should I put this up, do you think? 
Rob did it for me, and I really should put it up on the wall. Can I put this up here? That's your search word. Okay. Oh, pink red scroll. Just thought some of that left, so I thought I'd pop that up because that's still on special, and I thought I'd let you know. And it, it, it sort of it went with the fabric. Um, don't ask, please don't ask for this fabric because I wanted it because it was Christmassy to go behind the advent envelopes, but it's actually the fabric for one of from my Christmassy project for the Christmas soiree in July. So um, if you haven't booked yet, I'm going to pop up a post with a few more details tomorrow. I'll have both the links in, but in the meantime, if you want to go to the Needleworkers Soiree uh, Facebook page, all the links are on there. And also if you go to trybooking.com, put in Needleworker Soiree Nigambi, and you'll see the, the ones are still there from the Autumn Soiree, but then there's two dates you can click into book. And um, it's not that far away. And all of a sudden, everyone's booking, but we really want, you know, we do want a full haul. We really want to have a big whiz-bang party. Party, 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 party. Oh, I've got to, they're back in stock. Only a couple of pairs of those. I will get some more, but they're those beautiful ornate embroidery scissors. I just noticed. Um, that we had two pairs and they weren't online, so I'm very sorry about that. Okay, so what is in the advent? I'm not telling you, except for December 1. Actually, December 21st is a particular favourite of mine. Ooh, and the third. I love the, oh, the third's falling off the wall, it's a bit heavy. I love the third, but we decided that after much much debate and discussion when we started this year's that we would show you what was in one of them because it's blind faith that you're signing up and I really wanted you to have a really good idea so of, of what you were going to get. So this is what you get on December 1. Now keep in mind if you're a member of A Quilter's Life you will also every day I am popping up a little good morning Merry Christmas, today is the first, second or third, whatever I'm going to say, of December and I'm going to open my envelope on Quilter's Life every day and if there is something to make, I'm going to do the demo. Well, every day there will be something to do with what's in the envelope, so I'm going to do that with you each day, which will be awesome fun. Who said spoiler alert? Yes, it is a spoiler alert, but only one. Just one. Oh, Pam. Yeah, I know, but Pammy, I've got a... Because otherwise, how how are you going to know it's worth the money? You got to you got to know just one. I promise, just one. You ready? You can see I've had this one open already. This is what you get on December one. Oh, you get a lovely letter. There's a nice letter as well. And that's not all of it. Where are my beads? So this is December one. Now this is very indicative of the kit day, what I would call a kit day or a little project day. Nothing is too much to do and I have weighted anything that's Christmassy towards the start of December so you've got time if you wish to have it on your tree. So we are making a little, a little starburst decoration. You've got your fabric, your batting, your background, beautiful pearl um, pearlized variegated thread, and your little pack of bees, lovingly packed off by moi with a quarter of a teaspoon. Yes, that's how I measured them. So there they are, all ready to go. So you've got your pattern, instructions, diagram on the back, and when you've made it up, this is what it looks like. So that's the only one I'm showing you, but I wanted you to see one. I wanted you to, to have just an idea of what you're going to be doing. So. You can get that done to put on your tree. And they're not all Melba, and they're not all Christmassy, Christmassy, and there are tradi there's traditional stuff and there's modern stuff, but it's not all make something every day as well. And I have really, this time, tried to put things in there that are emphasis on you as well, because we do this at Christmas. We do all this stuff for everybody else, and this is all about doing something for yourself and then I thought it was really silly if I turn around and give you everything to make to give away again. So there are days that are things just for you. 
as well in here. I'm not telling you anymore. That's it. <laughs> so I'm going to put this one back in here. I have my own set, so I will be starting um, earlier than you because I want to get all those little demos filled and completed and ready to put up, and then I'll pop one up each day in December. So yeah, I'm. I've been working on it since probably probably Boxing Day, <laughs> but I'm I am just still really really excited about it. So and uh, yeah. We do feel like Santa's workshop. It's quite lovely. Okay. So we so you can sign up and pay in two lots, or you can sign up for the whole lot now, and then we'll send you out on the first of um, first of July your Waratah wine bag as your freebie. Okay. Well, that looks really boring up there. I don't know where I put the. Oh, it's over here. Let me just pop this back up because I don't. It's just like a blank space, like a guess. I put that with it. So I tried to I tried to pick that thread to really um, complement the Melba fan. Go, let's pop that one up there. All right. Now, speaking of stitcheries and really really easy ones, um, I've got Margaret's uh, projects for the soiree as well. So. I just wanted to show them to you for those that are coming and also because uh, I know a lot of you are coming that didn't come to the one the other weekend. So I wanted to show you her beautiful projects. So we've got, this is Sunday, this is, I'm pretty sure I've got that right, Sunday is the Christmas bags, this is a Christmas tree. Ta -da. So this, oh, this is glitter fairy frost how cool shiny so she's done two different colorways um, i'm not i'm not sure if any of these will be available afterwards because uh very soon very quickly after the next soiree we're off to birmingham and i think that anything that is left is probably going to go in her suitcase to take for our stand in birmingham anyway so that's the christmas bag and the other one, you know, everything about Christmas really sort of, once the, once the fun starts, makes us smile. And her other project is indicative of just making me smile. And it's very, very cute. Um, and if you're in the UK, there is a version of these coming with us for Birmingham. So... These are her coasters. I'm going to put them that way. Look at them. Are they not just so gorgeous? So this is the set that will be your kit for the Saturday at the Nagambi Soiree. There you go. <laughs> so very, very Christmas Aussie. Um, and we are doing a, a slightly different version, but we will have a set of these with us at Birmingham Festival of Quilts as well. We're doing a little bit of a collaboration with my fabric and these together. So then that's the other project for Nagambi. Aren't they cute? They are so cute. Love it. Oh, Fiona, that are you are most welcome. You are most welcome. All right, so I'm gonna pack these up because I am the keeper of the coasters until man I've lost the I've lost the container already that they came in. That just can't be possible. I might have put it out on the desk. I'll just keep her off the coasters. It's a big responsibility when someone gives you their work and you're responsible for looking after it. Um, so I will show you mine at the New Channels Cottage when I see you on the weekend, my projects for the soiree. And then the following weekend, I'll be in Shepparton. And somewhere there, I'm supposed to have moved house and it hasn't happened. <laughs> um, that's a nervous laugh. We'll get there. Oh, little trinkets and things for Birmingham. Oh, I wanted to just show you these because these have, I've been waiting for these to arrive to ship off to England because I thought, There'd be a really lovely little thing if someone came 
to the show and they had a friend that couldn't make it, I thought this would be a really nice present for them to take home or for someone that wasn't a sewer. So these have just come into our tin supplier that you know we had all our lovely tins at Christmas from and they're Australian wildlife ones and they've got Robbie's favourite bird on them, they've got blue wrens on them. So these are our new little tins and then I thought well my guys here might like them too. I'm sorry about that light, that's the ring light that's shining on the studio. Um, aren't they gorgeous and round the edge look at that they've got little subtle got little kangaroos and then I thought what would I put inside because I don't I can't ever just give a tin I have to put something inside so I thought five inches of mint flat uh, mint gum leaves would looks really nice because it pulls up the green and the leaves so if you do buy one I'm going to put five inches of that in there because I just can't send a tin empty I can't do it so I'm going to put that in for it there for you as it's a little special from the show. So they're up on the website as well. I've got some and then I had I had 24 because I had to order them. They've been on order for months. And um, I, when I picked them up today, she said, no, I think you can have some more. So you can have these and then I'll nick down and get some more for, um, for Birmingham. So they're up as well. Now, two other things. Um, oh, three, three. Last week I said to you, I told you all about Catherine and the fantastic book that she showed me, gave me, from Cockatoo, which is Harvest, Grow, Harvest and Eat, a guide to growing food in Cockatoo, which is actually all about growing vegetables and fruit in a cold climate. And you got me. I had orders, email, messenger, Facebook, I came in everywhere. So when I finally got to Catherine, she said, how many? I said, I don't know. I really don't know. So I've gone back to basics and I've actually put it up on the website tonight. Um, search under Advent and you will find it. So I've actually managed to set it up so you can just buy it as part of a normal order. And then I'm going to sort it out with Catherine afterwards. So if you missed last week, this is the book. I've never plugged a book like this before um, just for the sake of it but I was really really impressed with the book because look it's it was a COVID project and it was a community project it's a non-profit thing that was organization set up whatever you want to call it to keep the community motivated but also to educate a lot of people sort of that next generation down that didn't know how to grow their own vegetables and fruit and were really struggling you know economically so learning to grow and be self-sufficient was just a wonderful motivator and inspiration for the whole community. Margaret and I went through this several times on the Saturday night between the soiree days. And I know Marg went back in and bought three or four more. And I am certainly buying a few um, to give to my friends. And I'm going to probably take a couple with me overseas as well. Because it's, it's kind of Aussie as well. It's really lovely. So it's got lovely photos in it and they are $20, 20 bucks. They, the graphics and everything, I'm just, I don't know, for some reason I'm really proud of this local community, sort of from the Dandenongs where my mum and dad grew up. I just think it's fantastic. So they are now up and you can actually purchase them straight on the website, okay? So they're under the word Advent tonight. And the other thing is we had, we didn't have as many on the Sunday as we did on the Saturday at the soiree. So I've actually got um, some of the kits left for our Sunday project, which is our little autumn leaf book. And if you excuse me just for a minute, I'm just texting Rob because he's down the other end and I didn't bring in a glass of water. So you go, glass of water, please. What do you think? Kisses, emojis, something? Like the the, piece, the 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 kiss one, do you think we'll just put in two of those? Put a glass of wine just in case he doesn't get it. Maybe some rain, maybe the glass with the water, that'll do. He'll get it. Um so I have popped them up on the website to, tonight. So um if you would like one, they're available. So I'll show you what's in them. 
and you can make up your mind. Now our little book cover pattern is has always been a winner and we sort of we took that and we used our autumn soiree as the inspiration. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Oh, that's better. We had spag bol for tea and I must have been a bit salty. I'm a bit thirsty. So this is what we made on Sunday. And the kit which we had comes with the book in it. So you get a really one of those really nice flash hardcover Cumberland red and black books. Um, a hardcover is always better for using with this book design okay with the with the book pattern rather than a spiral it's much easier and they sit a lot better if you've got a firm spine so once you've made one with the kit you can go off and and buy a whole heap more books and make a heap more but to stick with the the firm one so there you go so this is wool flannel in a, in a black gray you've got a benetics uh autumn leaf print on the back in flannel also. These are Sue Spargo Merino felt wool. You've got little squares and then you've got your thread in the kit. So this is the secret tool. This is the, the, the Solvi wash away. So that's going to be your back cover. You've got some matching autumn coloured Melba for the lining which you really, it's sort of it's in there, you can't really see it, but we went with our stuff for it. That's going to be the front cover. And then you've got all your little bits of felt in all lots of different colours to use as you wish to do your leaves on the front. Then you've got two different coloured threads to play with. So I've got a, again, a, a variegated Wonderfill Pearl in green and also one in this lovely orangey yellow. It's, it's not quite the same as the one we're using with the Waratah, it's a little bit lighter and brighter. Then in the pattern, <clears throat> and you get, you know, instructions. I do love it at a soiree because everyone gets chatting and then um, we, <laughs> we all seem to take shortcuts. <laughs> but oh, not so much on Sunday. There were shortcuts on Saturday. I know there were shortcuts on Saturday. Okay, so then you've got all of your leaves here. So what you do is you trace them off onto this stuff, which is the soluble, sticky, Solvi. So you actually draw it onto the cloth side, not onto the shiny side, because it's this side that's the water soluble magical stuff. So we draw it on this side, and you can pop all of your little vein details in as well. And I just, I'm going to fall in love with this stuff, and we're going to use it a lot because. It, particularly when you're doing felt, it just gives you, oh, you know how rotten felt is to work with when you're trying to cut out little pieces all the time. It's just difficult and then it's really hard to draw on your detail onto the felt. So this solves all that. For you okay sorry I couldn't talk and cut at the same time there you go so I've got my leaf and I need to choose one of these so I think I'll we'll use this one like I did on the original book so that's this one here it doesn't have to be the same as mine and then you put your glasses on <laughs> and we peel the paper off the back like that and see that so that's the shiny paper coming off and you can see it's sort of it's like a little weave it's a little dotty weave and it's it's sticky so we pop that onto our felt there's our shape there's our detail I'll give you a close-up there you go so now I can go back now that it's on and sort of use it as a template as well and cut around Whoop. so these little kits are $25 all right so all of our 
our soiree kits generally we don't usually put a value on them but I we always aim for our soiree kits to be around $25 in value it's it, there's no real rule of thumb to it but you know that's roughly what they are so when you come to the soiree at $85 you get three kits valued at 25 or more um, sometimes they are worth more and you get slap up morning tea there you go so now I've cut around it I've actually got my whole shape all done so when I'm ready and I've got my uh, piece of felt marked up or sorry flannel marked up now it's important that you do read the instructions because um, you do need to mark a particular area to work within and it's actually towards this side because so do make sure you read the instructions on that because this side here actually forms the sleeve that wraps around the book so you are going to be starting over this side all right so now that that's ready I can just stick that on with a couple of pins or a little dab of glue where I want it and it's ready to stitch and not only am I going to be blanket stitching or chain stitch whatever I decide to do around the edges to secure it on I've also got all of my vein detail that's been marked onto that leaf so it, it means that I can just sew straight through it so if I was doing this again now I would actually do my stem stitch or my back stitch on the veins first because then that's going to secure it down onto the background and keep it in place and then I would go back and do my blanket stitch or a little bit of stem stitch around the edges afterwards but just doing those stems down through the middle means it's all stuck there and ready so when you're finished what happens where well, you go back it's a little cotton bud or you're going to go back with a cotton bud cotton ball or something with some water and you're going to dab it and all of that white is just going to dissolve it's going to go away it's it's water soluble so it will go so you can give it a good dunk if you want to to get rid of it or you can be a little bit more patient and just dab it all pull the little um, bits out and if it if it to reassure you that's exactly how this one was done so I've managed to remove all of the white it's all gone but you can see what I mean like I would do the veins first see on this one you do all the veins on all of them first and that holds them in place I did chain stitch here chain stitch here um, blanket stitch it's up to you do them all a little bit differently and then I've just done stem stitch for my little crossovers um, but a lot of people rearrange them in different ways on um, at the soiree, which was really nice. There are a few people that decided to put them sort of more in um, the shape of a wreath or anything like that. So once, once um, what did I say? Once I get my act together, we'll get Solby up as a product. Uh, the water soluble Solby as a product up you can buy. It is actually hard to come by, and it's hard to get. I mean, when I got mine it was like liquid gold uh, it sells that very quickly but I am going to pop, pop an order in it will come straight from the states and then we'll have a stack of it and um, we it's not cheap I'm not going to give you any illusions about that so I'm also looking at breaking down the big packs that comes in and selling it sort of in a four sheet size because uh, a little bit like buying polyfuse let's hope we can get that again soon you don't need necessarily a lot of it all at the one time so I will get us I will endeavor to get us some and I certainly plan on doing a lot more projects with it because it just solves so many challenges and issues um, with working with thicker fabrics and and working with linens and weaves and everything so very exciting but there you go so those kits are up they're 25 you've got your full diagrams I did pop in a whole heap of well, not a whole heap I popped in three I did blanket stitch stem and back stitch in here but because I'm a lefty um Stephen did left-handed as well so we've done them in reverse because for those of us that are lefties it can be a bit challenging reading stitchery design sometimes oh look I've broken down a kit I'll have to make another one for myself um I mean now I want to do one with felt with violets and roses and forget-me-nots a lot of those little designs that we had in Manning Tree Garden, I think, would look really, really cute 
poppies, all sorts of things. So we'll do that. That'll happen. And then one more thing I was just going to show you tonight. Um, that again, I've been mean to get in for ages and someone, and I'm really sorry, I forget who it was that asked me about it. We've been so, I can't remember. Who asked me about the, lamin, the, the laminated stuff? Someone asked me about it. Yes, Melissa, I know all about the ones that are here, but um, I'll talk to you about it later, but I have, it's fine. I'm all set up in the States and um, if I do it the way I'm doing it, I need to get it out of the States. Just popped in now because I am busy. Rosemary, thank you so much. Floria, hello. How are you? Oh, Christine, I had the loveliest weekend. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you had a good time. We we certainly had a great time. It was um, it was really, really good fun. Jenny Miller, is this one of the ones that you finished? You were bragging you finished. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure it was. Jocelyn, we're coming your way. That's all I can say. Jocelyn's here. She's one of the Ngambi crew that will be at the Spire in Ngambi. And um, I can't wait to see all the Ngambi girls as well. We've finished that, haven't we? We've done it. Okay. The other thing was this. Haven't touched it yet. But it finally, it finally got here. This, for me, uh, it, someone else might have it, but I didn't have it. This is Lam Lamifix Gloss. So... This is made by the same company that makes Flyzafix, that makes our palons that we sell, our interfacing that we sell. So this is the, the Vlyza thing, you know, the yellow company. I just call them the yellow company. And this is laminate. So this is going to laminate our fabrics. Now, I haven't done anything with it yet, but I thought, why not just try it while I'm with you live on Facebook? That would be a good idea. I have read the instructions briefly, so we're going to just try a bit. I, my motivation for this, I've always wanted to get some, ever since um, designed with Robert Kaufman and they were going through that phase where they had a lot of laminated, pre-laminated fabrics that they would sell, mostly in the States, for cute little girls' raincoats and all those making rain hats and things like that. But I could see the practicality in it as well. If we wanted to um, have wipeable placemats, if we wanted to, you know, especially for kids and things, and for me, going away again this year, I really, really have no excuse to buy a toiletry bag or a makeup bag when I sell zips and have you know, the pattern to make some. I don't want anything too complicated. I think a set of my trio purses is all that I need. I would rather have the three different sizes that come in this little pattern rather than having one, uh, one big one. I prefer to work like this, so there'd be the big one would have moisturizers in it, the medium one would have most of my makeup and makeup, and then I'd use the little one perhaps for just stuff um, if I'm going to the show for the day with my lippy and concealer and stuff like that in it. So probably the Panadol, <clears throat> a few things, the Barocca, stuff like that. So I want to make up a couple of sets of these, and 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 these need to have. The laminate though in the lining so that if anything spills or I pop anything in wet I do like having you know hand wipes and stuff like that as well and invariably something spills so I thought how great if I can get this stuff and we can line the inside but also you might want to line you might want to um, laminate the outside of one as well depending on what you're using it for it might be your shower cap or wet room one or I don't know so it's clear and it's really thin. It's not what I was expecting at all. So shall we just chop a bit and give it a go and see. It does, so what I read was pretty much that you pop a bit on and you trim down to the size that you want afterwards. And I thought, well, that's a bit weird. Does it shrink or something? But I guess, I guess you really don't want to be worrying about lining up the edge of this if you had a precise cut piece with the edge on a bit of fabric, a little bit like when we did the lanterns. So, I'm going to chop about here because I'm sort of thinking about what size this is. So we'll do that and how about I grab that bit of leftover Melba. Um, it's not, okay, it's not cheap chips stuff. It's uh, $10 a half metre and it's 45 centimetres wide. So, 
I'm thinking you're going to probably get the lining for, for a set of trio purses out of half a metre if you're lucky, but I would probably grab a metre. So this is going to go on here. And it says, it says, don't laugh, I know I shouldn't be doing it now. Um, it says a warm iron to start and you've got to put something over the top. Now it says to put cloth over the, over the top, but I've got the applique mat. So I'm going to try this first and if it all goes really wrong, it's my problem, my fault and we'll start again. It says, I like an applique mat. Okay, I'm going to turn the heat down. It says warm iron and no steam. No steam. Push the button in. We go. Me too, Jenny. <laughs> I want to see it work. So it says to use cloth and a warm iron until you have a sh are happy with where it is. And what it says is that when it is when you're just using it with the warm iron, you can still come back and peel it. You see, I'm pulling it off and reposition it. I'm just going to pop. I'm going to do my usual trick, folks, and stick a. No laughing, okay. I think the, the, the blue ironing board's already gone to the farm. We're calling it the farm. It's not really a farm yet. Well, it was a vegetable garden. I'm farming weeds. A lot, I'm farming a lot of weeds. Um, I'm farming a lot of potatoes. And uh, there's bulbs coming up everywhere. But I'm not farming much else yet. Okay, so it says when you're happy with where it is, crank up the heat and hit it again. So if anything goes wrong, we'll blame the fact I'm not following the instructions and running with a fabric over the top. Okay, it's pretty good though. I'll just do this bit and then I'll show you. I think um, I think the problem with the applique mat, if anything, is it doesn't let enough heat through. <gasps> Can you see that? Look! Hey! Okay. Let me just give this a good press. It says, go slowly and firmly. Uh, might be better with a big iron too rather than the little one. So you're sort of pressing more surface area at once. Oh, oh. We have laminated fabric, folks, just like that. It's all shiny. Isn't that amazing? I suppose you're going to let it cool. All right, so what was the other thing? You're going to want to know, and so do I. I just want to run it. Should we just run it through the machine and see how it goes? Because if I can't, I can't see that you would need a different needle, but I just want to, they didn't say that you did, but I just want to uh, reassure you that it's all right. Oh, I'm making up a set of bags for Margaret as well, because we're traveling together, and I'm going to use Red Scarlet with that gorgeous little nightfall, little black blossom that's on special as well, and the this... Scarlet solid is perfect red to go with our red zips. So I'm going to pop that in the lining and I'm going to have this as the outer bag and then have it laminated on the inside for makeup on two of them and on the outside on the other one. A bit excited now. Let me just trim around this and then I'm going to just fold it in half and pop it through the machine and see how it behaves. 
Now, I don't think we're going to have any problems like we would if we were putting, um, you know, when um, Annie from Bionic.com likes to use a lot of thicker vinyls and things, and they can cause problems and stick on the machine. But we're not going to have that problem because we've popped it on essentially the right side of the fabric. So, and we're always going to be sewing, well, I am with these purses, right sides together. So the laminates, laminate, how cool is that? Sorry, it's been years I've been meaning to do that. It's always going to be on the inside and it's not going to be brushing up against our um, stitch plate or our feet, so it should be fine. When you put a hole in it though, I would imagine it's going to be the same as when you are using a vinyl. So you're not going to want to pin because holes are going to stay there. So I'm going to just use some of the, my little wonder clips and we'll just whiz over to the machine and just see how it behaves. <clears throat> if you do find you get any slippy slides, pop on your walking foot or if you've got a dual feed, you'll have your dual feed engage on. And let's just see how we go. So it just it just feels a little bit stiffer. It sort of just feels like you've got um, interfacing on it. But it's not catching the thread or anything, so I'll just twist through. Didn't have to change my tension or anything. It was perfect all the way, both sides, all good. So I'll just turn this bit through. Oh, okay. Now. When I'm turning through, you know, all right, I have not stuck that down well enough yet because <laughs> it's not stuck well enough. I'm just going to give it another hit. So how about we follow the instructions and it says to pop cloth over the top, not the applique, not the applique, no. That's better. What I think will happen when I turn it through, and obviously when I make the bag, I won't have to turn it through like this. There we go. So I turned it through. Yeah. Do what the instructions say. Um, do it with a cloth. Do it with cloth. Don't do it with the applique mat. Another bit. No, this bit, my handle bit, I'll just stick this over the top. Did I save it? Just about. Okay, so don't do as I say. Don't do as I do, do as I say. Run it with, it's still good. But it's going to sit nicer and it's going to stay nice and flat and attached if you run it with a cool iron under the cloth, get it where you want it, and then pop another cloth on top. So a tea towel, a bit of leftover, plain cotton, whatever you've got, and hit it really nice and firm with that. And then you're going to get a really nice finish. So that bit I've just re-ironed is fine, but you can see I've got a couple of wrinkles there. So I will go back, do it again properly. But you saw how good it was. It's just really, it's going to give you a really nice finish on things. And I can see lots of applications for it, particularly just nice mats to have on the table. It's going to be great to use it. So that's up as well under tonight's uh, thingy, word, advent. Um, and I will finish off this uh, and then I'll get done this week. 
and then we'll write up that pattern. We'll get all of those kits cut. The threads will come in from the US and we'll have all of those out to you as promised on the 1st of July. If you're watching this later on and you've ordered your advent after the 1st of July, you'll still get the freebie if you pay up front. It's just that's the first date that we're going to start sending them out. And that because that's when we'll have all of the printing in, um, all of the threads here. And for us, it's just going to be, um, it's like a test run for sending out the actual advents because we'll have as many of you uh, with your little parcels as ready and it's it's yeah it is it's a test run for Santa's workshop to do the mail out to all of you just at this time you get the little bag next time you'll have a big box with a pretty sticker on the front with your name on it going out on the 1st of November so that is it from me for this evening oh I did pop just that little purse pattern um, on tonight's word advent as well so, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. If there's anything else to update you on, you know I will pop in and let you know. But otherwise, I will see you from the New Chandler's Cottage next weekend. And I'll probably pop in from a couple of lots of little different spots if I can over the weekend, just to show you uh, a little bit more of the view. And, um, yeah, the garden. It's looking pretty bare now because it's winter, but there's lots of bulbs coming up and we're sort of discovering new things in the garden all the time. If you're on a quilter's life, you'll know I got carried away in the back corner last weekend. But yes, as I mentioned on it, Amber and Philip did come and clean up the mess that I created and I got carried away with my new secateurs in the back uh, corner of the garden. Look, you enjoy the rest of your week, won't you? If you've got any questions at all about the advent, about anything you've seen tonight, anything on the website, please give me a buzz. I'm in and out a bit tomorrow, um, but just leave me a message or you can also email me at info at channelerscottage.com. As I said, have a great week, and I look forward to seeing you next weekend. All right, bye-bye, everybody. Bye.